Welcome back to this first half of chapter two, where we are focusing on learning the new terms that we'll be using all semester and making sure that we feel comfortable and confident when we see these ideas show up graphically. Next week, when we get to the second half of chapter two, we will be focusing on the deeper quantitative problem solving, but we can't solve problems if we don't know the pieces that are going into them. Okay, so we ended last video with this idea that it is really hard to write in words what time as a physics idea is. But we all understand what time is in an everyday sense, and it functions the same way in physics. If you glance at your watch right now, you can say what time point we're at. And more important to what specific time point it is, we can think about elapsed time. And that will be the idea that shows up over and over in our course, where it's as if someone has started the timer at the beginning of a problem, and now what we're really caring about is the elapsed time from when we started to look at that situation. Elapsed time has a definition that's very similar to displacement. Delta T means the change in time is equal to the final time minus the initial time, where again, those final time and initial times are kind of time points. You glance at your watch or your stopwatch or a point on a graph, and that's what we're looking at, um, and elapsed time is then the change in those. Now, uh, until we invent time travel, the final time is always going to be a bigger number than the initial time. So although this definition looks really similar to displacement, time is a scalar quantity. Once somebody invents time travel, I promise I will come back and update these slides and these videos, but I think we're pretty safe for now. Okay, so with an understanding of time, we can now talk in more depth about the ideas of speed and velocity. Average velocity in words is the change in position divided by the change in time. We've already said that the change in position is what we mean when we say displacement, and the change in time on the previous slide, we gave it a name of elapsed time. Average velocity has this big equation that we probably want to write down in our notes with a description of what it's trying to tell us. Delta x is displacement over delta t, which is elapsed time. Putting in those equations from before, we have x final minus x initial over t final minus t initial. And that's what gives us the average velocity. Average speed is one that we have to be a little more aware, can't have an easy equation. Because distance, the same way that your step counter doesn't care which way you walk, distance we actually have to think about every single part of the journey that we made and count all that up. And average speed just uses that counted up distance and divides it by the elapsed time. We will always write out that description of average speed in words instead of something that also looks like an equation because it really doesn't function in the same way that equations do. Okay, so uh, a starting point for us to see if we understand these um, two new ideas. We have a ball that rolls 4.6 meters to the left across a long table in two seconds. So using our understanding of speed and velocity, and you can go back to the previous slide, rewind the video if you need to, I want you to pause the video here and fill out your answers to these two questions. Okay, as always, pausing the video is really going to help make sure that you feel on track. You can check your initial gut instinct against the correct answers. And if you were wrong, no one is there to make fun of you or judge you or anything, but you are there to make a note to yourself in your notebook, hey, I should double check this or practice this or ask about it in office hours. Okay, so the ball's average speed cares about the distance and the elapsed time. We're told that it rolls 4.6 meters, the time is two seconds, and so we get 2.3 meters per second. 
What is different about the velocity? What piece of information in that statement at the top do we now have to care about for velocity? Hopefully we thought about the idea of left being a direction which velocity needs. And so left in our kind of standard sense is going to be the negative direction. So the average velocity would be negative 2.3 meters per second, or it would be completely valid to say the phrase 2.3 meters per second left. But we do need an indication of some kind that we have a direction and that we're including that understanding of direction. Here's a picture here to help us understand what we mean by negative and positive velocities is simply indicating arrows that are pointing in opposite directions from each other. Paying attention to the direction of vectors is probably the single most important thing that comes up in chapter two and stays all semester. Okay, so a little bit more practice. And again, this is something that if we were in class, I would actually have you take a time and write out in your notebook, so everyone working by themselves, which means that you should pause the video for as long as you feel you need to answer these questions with a calculator handy, writing out your steps in your notebook, the whole, the whole deal. Okay, so we wanna to try to find the average speed and average velocity for at first someone who sprints to the right along the track for 50 meters in eight seconds and second we want to just look at when that person walks left for 50 meters over 40 seconds pause the video and take as long as you need okay so for the first part part a we have that the displacement is 50 meters in the positive direction and the elapsed time is eight seconds. So we started at time or at position zero and time zero. If someone is trying to actually keep track of this sprint, they have a stopwatch. And so the velocity is positive 50 divided by eight, which would be positive 6.25 meters per second and the speed would just be 6.25 meters per second without having to specify the plus sign because speed doesn't care. In part B, we have that this person is walking. It takes a lot more time, but the same total distance and displacement is now in the left direction. So the velocity is negative 50 meters on the top over 40 seconds on the bottom gives us negative 1.25 meters per second. Without that negative sign, it is not a correct answer. And then the speed is 1.25 meters per second, no plus or minus sign because speed is a scalar and does not need direction information, should not have direction information. All right, so let's think about the entire trip, the sprint and the walk back. So if we think about the speed, we need to know the total distance. That person's step counter for the day will add up 50 meters and 50 meters. The distance is one that does not care about what direction we are going. And so we end up with a speed of 100 meters divided by 48 seconds, and we get a little over two meters per second, 2.1 meters per second. Now here's the tricky thing that helps us realize that average velocity is not always telling us something that is useful in the everyday kind of sense. What is this person's displacement for this whole motion? Their final position is at zero meters and their initial position is at zero meters and so the average velocity is zero divided by 48 to end up with zero meters per second. On average, the amount of really fast rightward motion and really slow low, um, leftward motion, all of that doesn't matter when we have ended up at the same spot. So average velocity is one that we need to recognize is a physics idea, and it's not really what we're thinking of when we're trying to describe a trip that we might have taken. 
Okay, so the next thing for us. We have an object on a number line here. So the number line has an origin spot. It's got positive locations and negative locations. And it's an object that at the starting moment, when someone hits the stopwatch to begin counting, it is at location one meter. That's its position. And then it goes to three meters and then to four meters, turns around and goes to two meters, and then it goes even further left to negative one meters as its final position. We can graph that motion. The graph that we're about to think about and the several different examples that follow is one of the two main types of graphs that we're going to be seeing when we are considering motion in this whole semester. It's position on the vertical axis, so where we physically are on the vertical axis, and time counting in the positive direction on the horizontal axis. This is also known as a position time plot, or position versus time, or XT graphs. All of these kinds of terms are describing the same idea. So let's start out with just making sure that we can read the graph itself. The initial position for the entire situation would be where is the object at t equals zero seconds. If we look at the different time points here, that would be a position of one meter, positive one meter. If we want to know x at any of the other points, we can just read off once we get to that time where the graph actually is. And so at four seconds, the position is negative one meters and that negative matters. So I want you to check your understanding of average velocity by going through with the equation that we introduced a couple of slides ago and calculate the average velocity of this object in the first two seconds and the average velocity of this object in the last two seconds. Pause the video to give yourself as much time as you want. Okay, let's come back. So average velocity is the final position minus the initial position on top, and on the bottom is the final time minus the initial time. So this first question, we need the position at the end of this set of time frame. So the position at two seconds is four, the position is zero seconds is one, so the top of our equation that we've written out should be four minus one, and the bottom should be two minus zero. So we have three halves, which is perfectly fine as an answer, or positive 1.5 meters per second. This thing was moving in the positive direction, and it is useful for us to know that we should put that direction. The second question, what is the average velocity of this object from two seconds to four seconds? The final position is negative one meters. We thought about that on the previous slide. The position at two seconds is four meters. We just mentioned that in the previous example. And so the top of our equation looks like negative one minus four, or a total of negative five on top. And the bottom is four seconds minus two seconds for a total elapsed time of two seconds. So we have negative five halves or negative 2.5 meters per second. If you missed either of those, it will be useful to try them again, maybe rewatch this section of the video in a couple of days and see if it starts to click a little bit better once we look at some of the other resources we have. But it is something that we want to be able to recognize is just putting the correct numbers into the equation that we have. Okay, so let's talk through these how these two differ, then we'll give you a chance to try them, and then we'll go through the answers. So the first question is asking the average velocity from one second to three seconds, which means we're using exactly the same equation we did in those previous two examples. We just have a different time frame that we're looking at. And the second question is asking, what is the average speed of that object? which means we need to go back to our understanding of why speed is a different idea, the fact that it cares about distance instead of displacement, 
and make sure we recognize how that would work here in this example. So pause the video as long as you need to. All right, so I'm gonna bring the cursor to try to help us look at some of this. So we have here at our starting time of one second, a position of three meters. So we'll keep that in mind. That's our initial position. And at three seconds, our final position is two meters, which means that the top of the average velocity equation, which is the final position minus the initial position, would be two meters minus three meters for a total of negative one meters of displacement. The bottom of the average velocity equation would be three seconds, the final time, minus one second, the initial time, for a total of two seconds of elapsed time. And so the average velocity would be negative one half or negative 0.5 meters per second. For the average speed, though, we have to be much more careful. When we had this object at the starting point, it was at three meters, it goes forward one meter, so our step counter, so far one meter. It goes backwards to three meters, which means the step counter doesn't care that it turned around. The total distance is three meters divided by the elapsed time of two seconds means we end up with 1.5, three halves, meters per second, a different number entirely. We thought about this in the previous video when we talked about situations where displacement and distance will start to really differ from each other. Anytime that something is turning around or changing direction, we're going to get very different answers from those things. Now, what we did when we were calculating average velocity is really the same idea as connecting the two points, the starting and ending points, and then taking the slope of that line. That connection is going to help us understand some of the ideas that are gonna come up in the next video. So average velocity is the slope on a position time graph specifically. Slope is rise over run. Rise here would be a change in position, displacement, and run here would be a change in time, elapsed time. This works for positive and for negative slopes, and the plus and minus sign matters to average velocity. If an object is moving at a constant velocity, it is just cruising down the highway with uh, cruise control on, then the position time graph will be a straight line. The shallower the slope, the flatter it looks, the slower that object is going, and the steeper the slope, the more up and down it is, the faster that object is going. This idea of steep slopes and shallow slopes is going to be really important to us when we get to the more extended graphical analysis in the next lecture video. This slide here um, is helpful to students who have had extensive practice with the kind of math definition of an equation, y equals mx plus b, and it isn't going to be so useful and possibly more confusing if you really haven't seen that in a while. And if so, don't worry about it. I'm just trying to make connections to those other courses that you may have had. The thing that we're going to add to our understanding in the next video is that we have already started to see how average speed is okay, but average velocity can be really misleading. That sprinter who walked back, they put a lot of effort into that, and to tell them that their average velocity is zero is not all that useful. We do want to be able to talk about instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity but it is worth noting that there are a lot of situations in um, this class where we really can't delve into um, these ideas in the same way that a calculus-based physics course could, but we will make sure we understand 
the concept of it and how we can read that off of graphs quite easily. So we'll see that in the next video.